name is Aaron Adams. You are listening to Real Estate Tips and Tricks with me, Aaron Adams. This is News Talk 1430 WXNT. And today we're talking about Indianapolis. And it reminds me of a story that I heard, and I don't know if it's a myth or, or if it's real, but it makes an interesting point, of a man living in Texas at the turn of the century. Many of you have heard about this man or heard this story before, and I think it drives home a really good point because the, he had inherited a farm from his parents and he tried to farm it and found that nothing would grow on the farm. He sold the farm in order to chase his fortunes in gold only to find out that um, that farm wasn't producing because it happened to be full of oil. And a lot of you here in Indianapolis have lived here your whole life um, are, are trying to build for your retirement, are trying to grow your wealth, are trying to invest by uh, investing in the stock market or in mutual funds or in companies. And I uh, tell this to investors all over the country that I invest and build for my retirement by buying single family homes here in Indianapolis. Um, it, it really is just as simple as buying little greenhouses like in the game of Monopoly. You buy little greenhouses, you trade them up for red hotels. When people land on your little greenhouses, they pay you. When they land on your red hotels, they pay you. And if you think about it, for you know, all of us have probably played Monopoly at one time or another. If you really think about it, if you're playing Monopoly and you don't buy little greenhouses, do you collect money? You do. Every time you pass go, you collect $200. You also get community chess money here and there. But so you could play the game of Monopoly. Your strategy could be hoard your money, uh, don't buy property, don't buy houses, don't buy hotels, and try to just build your wealth by passing go every time around the board and collecting $200. Now some of you are sitting there laughing because for most of us, that's idiocy. Who would play Monopoly without trying to buy properties and without trying to buy little green houses? And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about real estate and why I wanted to get involved with this type of platform is so that on a weekly basis I could share with you um, why I don't invest in the stock market and why I don't invest in mutual funds. Um, Warren Buffett is an investor that many of us have heard about and one of, the, one of his mantras is that he only invests in what he can understand. And I tend to be a simple guy and I only like real estate because I understand it. Now, I understand what a mutual fund is. I understand that I could have bought Facebook stock a, a couple months ago. I have a Facebook account. I like Facebook, but um, I don't understand how that company works. I don't understand how they make their money. And so for me personally, it's difficult for me to go buy Facebook stock because while I understand on the surface what it is, I can't understand how to monetize that. And the one thing that I love about little greenhouses here in Indianapolis is it makes sense. When I left California to get six or seven hundred dollars a month in rent, I had to spend a hundred thousand dollars or more. When I came to Indianapolis in 2004 and since then, to get six or seven hundred bucks a month in rent, I only need to spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, and I can easily average ten to fifteen percent on my money by buying little greenhouses here in Indianapolis and by buying rental properties. And the, some of the most brilliant economic minds in our country have come to that same conclusion. And it's laughable to me because I figured that out years ago. And uh, so, you know, why would I have... Now, don't get me wrong. I grew up in Vegas. I grew up in Atlantic City. Uh, I actually worked in the casino summers when I was going to college growing up. So first-hand experience, my father was a casino gaming executive and I know what gambling is. And I feel like uh, it, it, when I'm buying and selling stock or if I were to be buying and selling mutual funds, it's no different than if I am buying or selling numbers at the craps table or buying and selling bets at the blackjack table. And I don't get it and I don't understand it and that's why I like houses. So think about your financial situation, think about your money, and ask yourself if you understand what your money is invested in. And for some of you that may resonate with you because it's always resonated with me that Warren Buffett has said that he invests in what he understands. And let's talk about Indianapolis for a moment because it really is the best 
number one cash flow market in the country. And there's some specific reasons for that. Um, Indianapolis has been, has been uh, described as being the anti-rust belt. And a lot of people, and w when I left California, people fo poked fun at me for moving out to corn country, as they described it. Um, in fact, on one of the very first plane, fight, plane flights when I came out here, um, I had a friend, uh, well, I didn't have a friend, but I was sitting next to a gentleman on the plane, and I asked, and we started talking, and um, he said he was from Carmel. And coming from California, Carmel spelled the exact same way as Carmel. And, you know, it's probably because that's the Hispanic, you know, I speak Spanish, and that's probably, you know, the pronunciation is Caramel. And I thought, well, right off the bat, that's kind of interesting, because um, he corrected me. I said, oh, you're from Carmel. And he said, no, it's Carmel. And I kind of thought that was amusing, because, um, you know, Carmel, California, is actually one of the most beautiful places in the world. And not to knock Carmel, Indiana, but uh, if anything... They should be uh, they they should be going with that with that uh, California pronunciation, but that you know that was to me just the stark difference between California and the uh, and the Indiana in, in mindset as I came out here because in, in Indiana it's straightforward it is what it is and uh, in California sometimes you get a lot more fluff from from the culture. So uh, one uh, getting back to to the, this Indianapolis market, uh, if you look at what this economy consists of. It has been one of the most resilient economies in not only the Midwest, but the whole country. If you compare Indy Metro in terms of unemployment to other markets, Indy, Indianapolis destroys them. If you look at diversity of business in Indianapolis, we tend to be much more diversified than other markets here in the Midwest. For example, we all know of companies like Eli Lilly, uh, the whole pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, um, tourism. Many of us have seen the brand new convention center downtown, the brand new football stadium. In fact, Indianapolis has spent more on infrastructure in the last five years than almost than as a percentage than almost any other city in the country. And all you have to do is walk downtown to see what a beautiful downtown Indianapolis has. We host events here every couple of months. Our next event is August 4th and 5th. We'll be at the JW Marriott, we, where, where literally we do a bus tour. We bring investors from all over the country. We have investors who live here in Indianapolis who will be joining us. And we'll put them on a bus. We'll take them around town. We'll show them the neighborhoods and markets we like to buy those little green houses in. And we'll show them the techniques, the um, systems that we use to collect rent, take maintenance calls, and make money from those properties, both for ourselves and for other investors. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you can get more information about that from us at invest317.com. And you can also call us at 866-612-0346. Now, not only is Indianapolis the anti-rust belt. Not only do we have phenomenal um, job growth, uh, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, tourism. Um, a lot of you don't realize, but the NCAA headquarters is here, which means we get Final Fours and Big Ten Championships and other sporting events. But the biggest, one of the biggest single factors is that Indianapolis is the most affordable real estate in the country and has and is a phenomenal rental market. Now just uh, the other day, I believe it was, it was the day before yesterday, um, front page of the Indy Star uh, was an article titled, Indy Once Tops in Home Ownership Drops to 23rd. Now this article is, was really interesting to me because it's not about affordability. We're still number one in affordability. But the percentage of home ownership in Indianapolis has dropped. And I thought, well, that's a really interesting article. And as I dug into it, um, and many of you probably read that same article or have seen it, but it talked about Indianapolis and Las Vegas. Now, I mentioned earlier, and, and, and we talked about linear and nonlinear real estate markets. And Indianapolis and Las Vegas are one and two on this list for drops in home ownership. 
Now, many of you are sitting there thinking, well, Aaron, you're talking about little greenhouses. You're talking about investing in real estate. That sounds kind of scary to me if the amount of home ownership has dropped in Indy, um, like Las Vegas. Well, I want to briefly touch on, on two, st two stats or two, uh, two figures, and then uh, when we come back, we'll dig into this even further. But if you look at population growth in Indianapolis, we tend to average a little bit over 1% a year. So every 10 years, the population in Indy grows 12 to 15%. Now compare that to contracting cities, which is one of the defining hallmarks of the Rust Belt, like Detroit and some other markets. That's absolutely not the case here. We are growing, and we're growing in younger populations, the 20 to 35 year olds. In fact, IndyStar had an article about a year ago um, describing how the downtown of Indianapolis is one of the fastest growing um, uh, cities in America for that, for that demographic of 20 to 35 year olds. So if you look at population growth, if home ownership is down and population is up, then one other statistic from this article really jumped out at me, and we'll dig into it when we come back, but um, new construction. New construction is only a quarter of what it has been um, over the past few years. So, so to distill it all to one thought for you to think about during the break, home ownership's down, population is growing, and they're not building any new houses. What does that mean? It means we have the perfect storm to be a landlord. Tons of tenants and opportunities available to you. I'm Aaron Adams. This is Real Estate Tips and Tricks with Aaron Adams. You're listening to News Talk 1430 WXN.